So have you guys been around VAC at all or utilized one or? Yeah. Okay. A big VAC truck. A big VAC truck. Yeah. So same concept and idea as, as a VAC truck, just smaller yeah. scale. Exactly. Um, you know, so we'll, you know, also we're using high pressure water, uh, to, you know, to cut the soil and then, uh, then you know, you know vacuum in and out. So I mean, we'll kind of just work from the front and work our way back around it. But uh, um, up front here, these are suction tubes. All this is is just Schedule 40 plastic. So I mean, you know, obviously they will break over time. We use plastic because it's not conductive to electric and things like that when you're down there you know, poking around and stuff like that. So obviously you can make one shorter. You, I've had guys couple them, you know, whatever to make them longer. You know, do all kinds of crazy things. Um, so, you know, these just slide on the back of the, uh, it, it's all four inch. So it just slides over top the four inch hose or underneath it. So that way you can, you can uh, hook onto it. Um, up here, we're running a <coughs> gas engine, fuel injected Kohler gas engine, 38 horse. So your fuel tank is over on the other side, silver tank. But it's pretty basic. You know, you got an hour meter of fuel. Um, you have a strobe light, and then you pull this light thing out of the spot, and you got to pull the lights off the back end. Then beyond that, you have a water pump. So when we start the thing up, water pump is turned off. You turn your water on. So if you just pulled up and you just want to suck mud and water out of a pit, you can do it. And you know, we'll turn your water pump on. Um, on, the, on the side of this box here is an antifreeze bypass switch. So in the wintertime, or more importantly, this, you know, early spring and late fall, uh, you know, is the biggest challenge, but, you know, we need, when it gets below freezing, we need to drain the tanks out of the, the water out of these tanks, otherwise there'll be popsicles and antifreeze in it. So inside, actually this tank here, there's a low water shutdown switch. So the first thing we want to do is there's a cross flow, so these tanks are tied together, so you can stick a hose on one side when you're filling them up, they'll fill them both up. But you do have a drain air valve over there, so what you, in the winter time, drain the tanks out. Obviously there's no water on it because of that switch, so to bypass the safety switch, because what happens when it shuts, that safety switch shuts down the water pump so you don't burn it up running water, basically the, the gist of it. So. Winter time, we use glycol or RB antifreeze. Uh, 100 below is the best stuff because it does it is an alcohol base versus water base, so it doesn't. It, I mean, it definitely won't freeze up. I've seen 50 below slush up on you and, and, and give some issues. Uh, but we use glycol fill in here. You have a three-way valve. You can see you got water off antifreeze. So right now it's flows the antifreeze. You can just switch it. You know, that's off switch to the water. So you switch this to water, start the machine up, turn on the water pump. And what I do is I grab the, the hose back here in the back and you'll hold the hose and you gotta hold this bypass switch now. Now turn the water pump on and just keep keep on pumping until you see pink come out of the end of that hose. That way you know the whole system's antifreeze, including your hose. Because the worst thing that happens is so you get the pump antifreeze, but then your hose is froze up. Your hose is froze up, and you can't do anything. So it's a fair, but that's what that's for. This is you know basically bypass that switch. So you see pink, let go of it, turn more pump off, and you're good to go. Um, right here is a uh, inline filter. So basically, it's, it's protecting that water pump from any rocks, any sort of debris that gets in, gets in water, you know, because believe it or not, you know, even if you get it out of the hydrant, there's all kinds of junk that's in our water lines, you know, little debris and stuff like that, I'm sure you guys have seen. So it helps filter that. Uh, if you ever notice that, hey, my water's pulsating, I'm not getting full water, pull that strainer out, clean it out. Usually there's some gunk in there. 
you know, a lot of times some algae or something like that from where guys leave water in the tanks for, you know, a week or whatever, then you obviously you'll get some build up inside the tank. So, you know, in the summertime, if you know you're not gonna use it for a week or two, drain the tanks, otherwise you'll get algae and stuff growing in there and it gets pretty icky and nasty. Right here, guys, this is for our, our vacuum. So this unit will suck and then also it'll blow fluids back out. So obviously flipper there, we're vacuuming, we're sucking. If for some reason you had got obstruction in the hose, uh, or if you had to, you know, for some reason, you know, I doubt you guys get into it, but I've had the other instances where they're blowing fluids into a, a frack tank or something like that, but you can pressurize the tank and basically blow back out. So, well, you know, for you guys spotting, you know, a lot of times you might get a rock or something stuck in the hose. Um, what I'll do is I'll close off the gate valve back here in the back, switch this to pressure, let it build up pressure, and also, you know, you'll, you'll hear the unit go over, really pop off, crack open that gate valve, and obviously, you know, take your hose, make sure you point it downwards, because then, then it'll give you a burst of air, and hopefully you can, uh, you know, blow out that obstruction back out. I mean, the key is, you know, put the hose somewhere because I've had guys just hold it out, then all of a sudden, just junk goes flying everywhere through the air. In the middle, it's kind of a neutral, so it's not doing anything. Um, but uh, it's kind of all it is just a uh, butterfly valve box underneath the blower, so just switching air back and forth. Um, tanks like i said they are cross flowed over so you put a hose in here on this one the other one does have an air gap where you can set it up with a cam lock uh, whether you're getting water out of your hydrants or you know your hose so it's uh, or if you go into a water company you know they want an air gap so you can hook up directly to it uh, so you can, you can uh, use it on that side this here guys is what we call a, a strong arm boom so this Also, basically this just this is a safety lock here but you can this is designed to swing around set your hose up on here and uh, basically try to get the weight of the hose so you're not it's all on you it works great especially if you're you know working right off by the curb or something like that um, obviously if you're st strung out you know, it's not something you're gonna use all the time but when you can it does make it nice um, you have two wands this is just a wash wand, spray down machine or whatever. Uh, it, is, it is a fan type, so you can adjust the, uh, the fan on the, on the end here. And then uh, this is a roto wand. This does the cutting. So this tip has a ceramic ball inside it, and that's what does the spinning. It actually does the cutting. Um, don't use this as the pressure washer to wash off stuff because this will peel off stickers, it'll peel off everything. It, it, it's, it's me. Um, also the key on on these is anytime you're using it, be pointing down, not pointing back up. Because you think what happens, I go mention there's a little ceramic ball in there that's spinning around. That ball relaxes, all of a sudden you pull the gun, 4,000 PSI goes shooting, before you know it, then you bust that ceramic and it's not it's not spinning in and basically that that tip is junk but um yeah just always keep them down uh, a little trick on these things you know to keep the mud from flowing you know when you start off you know cutting your hole mud's gonna splatter everywhere uh, take an old cone cut the top out of it just a little bit so you can get this tip down in you can cut get your hole started and once you got your hole started then obviously you can start working from there but at least keep some of the mud, mud down from flying all over you. And both these obviously hook up on the back end. Your hose reel, you have 50 foot of hose. Um, so you know, obviously you could add, add more tied down right now. The back end here, there is a, a pressure gauge and you can adjust the pressure on there's an unloader valve, just pressure up or down if for some reason you want to lower the pressure on it. And then there is a little quick coupler holder to hold the hose in place. 
right here guys is all for your uh, your rear door this is all just electric over hydraulic yeah, just actually just turn the key over that's all we need there so you got lock and unlock so unlock so it's easy here go over relief you know you're unlocked Obviously, you're up and down for your tank, so we can use the dump it. Um, all the lock is is just a uh, hydraulic cylinder. It is an over center lock, so we'll, when we close it, we'll you'll bring the door down, then you'll make make sure you'll see it suck, suction into it. Uh, the tanks, this deflector piece, this will last a long time, but if you do see it, that metal, you know, over time you get worn. Make sure you replace it. I've seen. Uh, Holes that you know get sandblasted inside the tank, you know, where that thing's disappeared. Um, that lock does it, it locks the door shut or does it lock it in place up top? Which one? The, uh, it's this a, one here is yeah. just locking it. Okay. You center them. It's so locking that, it open so it doesn't fall. Correct. So okay. if for some reason the hydraulic, you know, hose will blow or whatever, this doesn't drop down and kill you. Kill me basically. Yeah. So it's important. Yes, yeah, very important. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, inside the tank guys you'll see a, a steel metal canister inside there and there's a float ball in there and what that float ball is designed to do is as this tank fills up the float ball goes up your suction air is coming through this hose this is what where the air is getting pulled through the crate vacuum so that float ball is right inside where that elbow is at it floats up helps shut off the airflow. So basically what we're trying to do is protect your know, mud from getting sucked in the, the air filter system and then eventually protecting the blow. Exactly is what this is. It all is a big shot back with some water on it. Exactly. So just like shot back, it shuts off. So I mean over, you know every now and then every time clean that that ball so it doesn't get stuck on you. Um, but how do you get to it? Um, you have to take that apart inside there. You no, know, it's all encased in. But yeah. if you know it's stuck, you can un, you know there's two bolts. You unbolt to open up that that door and you know clean it out. Okay. So what what happens typically is mud will get where it gets stuck in there, and it's not allowing it to raise up. And then all of a sudden you notice you're getting you're starting to pull mud in through. I've had to use the rinse water to make the dump to clean it off. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we dump the spoils at? Uh, Shelly Sands, Shelly Company, over on, uh, what the hell is it? 104? Yeah, 104. Is that the only place? It's the only place I know. No, there you can go to uh, Mason's. They're, they're down there off the uh, south side there, Arm Creek Drive. I know they dump. I'm not sure if there's anybody up here on the north side of town for sure or not. You know how much they charge? I do not know for sure. Because okay. anytime we've ever dumped, we've been demoing with a customer and they've had a count and they're like, just yeah, tell them it's for such and such. Okay. I love how they have all the greasers labeled. <laughs> there's an arrow on every one of them that says grease. Nice. Yeah, we were we've been dumping a shell it's like sixty bucks. Yeah. It's not expensive. No, um you know back here you the seal, these sat seals last really long time, so I mean but four or five months. Years. No, oh, okay. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, but you know, you do want to you know, try to wipe it off, clean off, clean off the seals. You know, you know, keep grit and stuff off them. Over time, they basically just is stuck in there, so you can pull them out, replace it. Um, if you do need to adjust the suction against or you know, the tension of your door, you can do it right here. Uh, it's just basically here's a holder and then crank that fist in one, you know, turn whatever to adjust the 
the door coming in. What's going on in the back here? On the back here, guys, um, you have 30 feet of four inch suction hose. So it has got a cam lock on one end, cam lock in here, and you can open up your uh, gate valve to start sucking. Um, if for some reason you want to couple, additional hose together, get farther back, you could do that. Uh, you can do, um, you know, get another adapter. You can take one of those uh, T-handles off. All it is is four inch exhaust and, you know, shove it on one of these and then shove your, your hose in the other to add additional hose to it. There is a uh, six inch gate valve on the back end. Uh, what I like to do is when you're dumping, is I'll open that gate valve up, let all your water and stuff drain off of it because basically when you open this door it's mount rushing more just gushing mud you know everywhere so if you open that gate valve at least flows the water or controls it and then you know, obviously then you'll have the uh the heavier spoils left inside there that you can uh, you can dump out and clean out from there but at least minimize all the mud and stuff just flowing everywhere and getting all over the back into the back makes you know, life a little bit easier cleaning up. What is the maximum effective hose range on this though? It really depends on, I guess, what you're sucking and then, you know, obviously elevation change too. So if you're just laying straight out, I mean, I've had guys where they're just sucking mud out a pit in the backyard and have you know, neck down that, you know, down the two inch hose, but they were using just to suck water and mud out pits and they were a couple hundred feet back. And that, that's pushing a lot, but you know, 60 feet or something like that, you know, if you're back and I'm still trying to, you know, pull decent material. I've never, yeah. Those parked right next to it. That's the ideal thing is, you know, cause at the end of the day, is going to give you a lot less problems, you know, because you know you know you're getting a rock, and then you know it's bad enough finding it in 30 feet of hose, let alone 60 plus feet of hose. I mean, you know, typically you know if you do get a rock stuck in there, they're going to go wherever there's a cam lock or or something like that. That's where they're going to get get caught at, you know, because there's there's just enough restriction there. Uh, over on the other side, guys. You got a plastic cone holder. See so that cones on it. Uh, this is the air gap I was talking about earlier. So you can set up a cam lock. You know, hook up. You know, fill you know, for your water fill if you wanted. On each side of the tank, there is a little drain here. The best thing I found to use those for is wash your hands and things like that. Uh, and then I just need to get a little bit of water out for some reason. So I mean that's. Follows are good for there. So I got up front, like I said, you have your uh, big two inch drain here. So you just crank that valve. It's open right now. And then this is our filtration system. And like I said, they recommend checking and cleaning these daily. At least check them daily. Um, if you're drawing dry material, definitely you want to do this daily, if not twice a day. Uh, wet mud material, I mean, you can get by once a week because you think about what we have here is we call it three stages of filtration. The first one is because it's all about protecting this blower. You know, this is 1,000 CFM blower is probably a $5,000 blower, $6,000 blower. So first stage of filtration is air going through the tank, solids drop down in. Next phase is there's a cyclone here, like a, a vacuum cleaner. 
that the air goes through. So it's swirling around in here. Um, and then your know, particulates will drop out of it. So when we, hit, we can open this up, you get a little you know, drain, you know, clean out valve there, you can sit hose in there, wash it out. The filters here, that's our last line of defense. So as they get dirty and dusty, you can take these out, they are washable. They're half micron filtered. Pull it out, just take a garden hose or whatever, hose it down, leave it out overnight, let it dry, then you put it back in the next morning and, and go on. But if you get you know mud and dirt and you know stuff caked on it, just pull it out, wash it off with garden hose, and then stick it back in. But that's that's the light like soul of uh, protecting the blower. So you know, the biggest things on these thing on these units is you know a couple things that you know just really is getting dirty water not in a freezing unit and then you know, guys you know freeze and crack the pump water pump uh, or you know just not cleaning it out at the end of the day and stuff properly if you leave uh, the mud in overnight or over a week it's going to turn into concrete for somebody somebody because basically all those solids all that mud and dirt sells to the bottom it packs in and as you go down the road it's vibrating down and then it's, it, you leave it there for a week on end a guy's in there with a spud bar chipping that stuff yeah. out it just turns into concrete it's amazing um so you know dump it out every day if possible and then uh like I said, you know, the key is, you know, then on the anti-freezing, everybody knows to do it in the dead of the winter when it's cold all day. You know, I mean, you don't, you don't forget about it. But the worst is, is early spring and late fall when it's 55 degrees, 60 degrees and sunny. And then, you know, at the end of the night, it turns to 28, you know, or, you know, or it's nice today as tomorrow and then you you like you forget you know you use it you forget about it friday it turns to cold everybody forgets about it and freezing it and then that's when uh we get busted fittings and a busted water pump and things like that so you know the key is you know just like i said fall and springs when make sure you're hand freezing and keep an eye on the, on the weather uh, your water pump is right up here. It's belt driven with the with electric clutch. Your battery, it's just in a basic battery box. So it's, everything's open accessible. Uh, the blower runs on hydraulic oil, or uh, gear lube I should say. There are sight glasses on it. To, on each side of the lobes there to see the, uh, the oil indication on it. Uh, your fuel tank's right here, so. Everything's open and open to get get to. Then your jack, obviously. The trailer does have electric brakes on it, so. It helps out. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of weight, especially full of mud. It gets heavy. Yes. So this thing is a 14,000 pound GW trailer. So the grand scheme of things is if we had 800 gallons of, of 10 pound mud, and we had 400 gallons of water, you know, everything's still full that we would be at maxed out at 14,000 pounds. So, you know, in an ideal world, we should not overload, overload the trail. I mean, unless you suck pure He's sand. looking right at Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you should not overload the trailer. Chris. Okay. But, um, those tank up with your <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I mean, and that'd be like the only thing where I mean, obviously, it's gonna be heavier than the water, you know, things like that. And pack in there. There's one question: the valve on the bottom of the pressure relief. Really cool. This one here, the blue handle. Yeah. yeah. What does that actually contain? The blue handle. Yeah. All it does is just sh shuts off water flow to the uh, water pump. There is a little lock on it. I mean, there's no, so hopefully nobody does it, but if for some reason, you know, disconnecting all this, you have water in the tanks, 
you can shut off water to it. Yeah. Pop off the reef valve on it. What's that? It likes to give you shower every once in a while. Yeah. Give the pop off valve or you just send a river pressure. That's kind of just of it, guys. Okay. Any questions or concerns? Think you got it? Okay. All right. Well, thanks for doing that. No problem. Appreciate it.